gli studi eh, Racha Carrillo e Massias Peredo che vedete presentato nelle due conferenze che seguono questa mia breve introduzione offre due testimonianze di quella che è la scena architettonica eh, contemporanea messicana ehm, particolarmente interessanti ehm, perché particolarmente interessante è il lavoro eh, che sta portando avanti questa generazione di architetti ehm, raccogliendo l'eredità eh, di una ricerca architettonica che si è sviluppata per tutto il Novecento in Messico nel dialogo tra una ehm, reinterpretazione dell'identità e delle tradizioni eh, locali del, di un paese come il Messico e invece una ricerca eh, internazionale eh, che nel Novecento derivava dalle influenze del movimento moderno e dello stile internazionale. Se nel Novecento queste spinte sono state molto contrapposte, ehm, in questo momento, in questi ultimi anni, eh, sembrano trovare un rinnovato equilibrio ehm, che si fa carico di una serie di responsabilità, che sono le responsabilità della ricerca architettonica eh, più recente in un paese come il Messico. Eh, le conferenze di eh, Maurizio Rocha e di Maghi Peredo eh, sono state tenute a Mantova Architettura ehm, lo scorso anno, nel 2019, in un'edizione in cui Mantova Architettura ha dedicato particolare spazio all'architettura messicana eh, presentando in una mostra e in un ciclo di incontri eh, una ricerca che aveva trovato spazio sulle pagine di Casabella, il numero 897 di Casabella intitolato Disegnando Mexico, architettura, necessità, libertà, eh, che ehm, un numero che era nato da un interesse che la redazione aveva deciso di dedicare all'architettura eh, contemporanea messicana proprio perché ci era sembrato che... Ehm, che richiedesse una particolare attenzione. Uh, questa ricerca si è quindi sviluppata con un viaggio che avevo fatto in Messico incontrando questi studi e incontrando di fatto una rete di architetti, uh, di questa generazione di architetti, uh, molto coesa, molto collaborativa uh, e molto fertile, fertile nel confrontarsi e nel trovare un terreno comune uh, per una ricerca architettonica necessaria. Um, di fatto appunto il tema principale di questo, di questo incontro è la ricerca di una nuova identità dell'architettura messicana che si faccia carico eh, della eh, propria eredità, delle proprie radici che arrivano dalla, dalle architetture primitive, precolombiane, dal vernacolo, dalla tradizione e che trovano un importante confronto con le influenze del, eh, dei modelli del moderno eh, del Novecento e eh, con le esigenze del contemporaneo e con la ricerca del contemporaneo. Eh, questa generazione di architetti si è formata principalmente in Messico e eh, con poi delle specializzazioni e, svolte eh, negli Stati Uniti o eh, in Europa ehm, e poi però appunto ri, rientrati in Messico eh, questi architetti hanno fondato degli studi dopo delle brevi esperienze in studi di architettura locali come eh, quelli di Norton o di Alberto Calac ehm, per trovare una nuova espressione eh, nella ricerca di un nuovo equilibrio eh, dell'architettura messicana. Un nuovo equilibrio che si confronta su dei temi comuni, su dei presupposti comuni, su degli obiettivi comuni che nascono dall'ascolto delle esigenze locali di un paese per molte ragioni estremo, per ragioni climatiche, ehm, del territorio, sociali, politiche e l'architettura più recente del Messico nelle sue espressioni eh, trova eh, un dialogo tra il costruito e l'ambiente, tra la modernità come abbiamo detto e la tradizione locale ehm, e eh, reinterpreta anche quella che è una forte eredità ovviamente di, eh, dei maestri dell'architettura del novecento messicano eh, e in particolare eh, di Luis Barragan che per molti versi eh, ha, ha messo in ombra quello che era un territorio molto fertile dell'architettura messicana eh, dei suoi anni e degli anni successivi, almeno per come l'abbiamo vista noi eh, dall'Europa. Um, un tema di ricerca molto fertile per tutti questi, per tutti questi studi eh, negli ultimi anni in Messico è quello del rapporto tra lo spazio pubblico e lo spazio privato um, uno spazio pubblico che eh, è sempre stato eh, minato alla base in un paese come il Messico per delle ragioni di eh, sicurezza e di protezione in qualche modo no? dall'esterno dall e dallo spazio della strada um, le architetture più, più recenti stanno esplorando proprio quello spazio della soglia tra il privato e la città um, nel tentativo di abbattere in, in qualche modo quel, eh, quel 
il muro di, ehm, che contrappone lo spazio pubblico della strada a quello privato eh, della casa o quello interno degli ambienti eh, pubblici, degli spazi condivisi della comunità, ehm, esplorando i paesaggi interni, gli spazi di transizione che tanto ehm, che un ruolo così importante hanno avuto in tanta architettura del Novecento messicano. Ehm, molta importanza nel lavoro di questi architetti alla ricerca sui materiali, sulle tecniche artigianali eh, e un altro aspetto importante è quello eh, delle città in cui questa ricerca si svolge. Da questo punto di vista è interessante avere a confronto eh, Maurizio Rocha e Maki Peredo in queste due conferenze perché eh, questi due architetti lavorano in due città differenti che sono eh, Città del Messico per Maurizio Rocha e Guadalajara per Maki Peredo, eh, due città che sono le più, le più grandi città del Messico, eh, Città del Messico ovviamente la capitale con tutte le sue contraddizioni e la sua importanza anche dal punto di vista dell'eredità dei luoghi, delle architetture e, e delle scuole che eh, eh, in essa hanno avuto radici eh, e Guadalajara importante perché è la città di Luis Barragan ed è anche la città in cui eh, l'università eh, ha trovato e ha ospitato per prima il dialogo con gli architetti che arrivavano dall'Europa. Um, negli anni 50 del Novecento a Guadalajara sono arrivati eh, Matthias Göritz e altri architetti chiamati eh, dall'università dall ehm, per eh, portare in Messico eh, le ricerche che si stavano svolgendo nel modernismo europeo. Eh, qui proprio quindi ha avuto un terreno molto, fer molto fertile il dialogo tra l'identità locale e la ricerca di una nuova modernità eh, che ha poi dato origine a molte ricerche negli anni successivi. Um, Maurizio Rocha ha fondato il suo studio negli anni 90 del Novecento e nei primissimi anni del 2000 a lui si è aggiunta eh, Gabriella Carriglio, eh, da allora quindi lo studio porta i nomi di Rocha Carriglio ehm, e ehm, porta avanti una ricerca molto attenta alle esigenze reali degli spazi, alle esigenze reali degli abitanti e ehm, a una ricerca minima ed essenziale che... Ehm, eh, rinuncia o meglio rifiuta a qualsiasi, eh, qualsiasi aspetto non necessario eh, nella mh, ricerca di un rispetto di un'estrema eh, economia che vada incontro a una eh, essenzialità degli spazi. Eh, la grammatica eh, compositiva di Rocha Carrillo, quindi una grammatica elementare per certi versi archetipica, ehm, che si fa carico dei silenzi, dei vuoti ehm, e di eh, una mh, ricerca formale che ehm, appunto sia essenziale e di una ricerca della composizione della costruzione che possa essere seguita in ogni passo dallo studio e dagli architetti in, in prima persona. Um, Rocha e Carrillo hanno realizzato molte architetture, molte anche di carattere pubblico che per certi versi è un aspetto eccezionale per il Messico dove la principale committenza è una committenza privata um, e, e invece loro hanno realizzato diverse architetture di carattere pubblico di un forte portato culturale e sociale um, portando dietro anche una eh, eredità che è quella eh, di una attenzione che Maurizio Rocha ha avuto nei primi anni del suo lavoro per l'arte visiva e l'arte contemporanea. Eh, Maghi Peredo lavora invece a Guadalajara con eh, Salvador Macias, eh, lo studio Macias Peredo è attivo dal 2007 e ha realizzato diversi lavori di carattere privato, per cui diverse case, eh, ma anche alcuni, alcuni edifici pubblici. Eh, è interessante nello studio di Maghi Peredo e di Salvador Macias come si eh, sovrappongano i materiali di ricerca del processo, in particolare i modelli, i modelli che sono in realtà un materiale di ricerca fondamentale per tutti gli studi, gli studi messicani che ehm, lavorano molto con la eh, materia e con la ricerca plastica della forma, ehm, ma appunto nel lavoro, nel, nello studio di eh, Massia Speredo i modelli si sovrappongono a, a dei a delle macchette di carta e a delle, dei grafici, degli schemi eh, di illustrazioni grafiche che semplificano eh, il processo di ricerca della forma e della geometria, andando a raccontare proprio un'attenzione particolare sulle composizioni geometriche della forma ehm, che ricercano una essenzialità del, del, del processo compositivo. Eh, due maestri ehm, che 
eh, Salvador e Maghi riconoscono eh, come, come propri maestri sono Joseph, Joseph Albers e Matthias Göritz e credo sia interessante eh, come eh, appunto questi due maestri siano di fatto due maestri che raccontano del dialogo tra il Messico e, e l'Europa e eh, del dialogo tra le forme archetipiche massive e tettoniche delle architetture precolombiane e un processo di astrazione geometrica che ha portato a una reinterpretazione di, 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 di queste forme e di queste eredità. Um, un lavoro quindi anche quello di eh, Massia Seperedo che racconta di un'attenzione alla reinterpretazione della forma nella direzione di una astrazione e di un'attenzione alle esigenze del territorio che è fondamentale e comune a, a tutta la, la ricerca architettonica messicana più recente. E, per approfondire il loro lavoro e per contestualizzarlo anche nell'ottica di una eh, più ampia ricognizione dell'architettura messicana recente vi rimando quindi ancora al numero di Casabella 897 dove ha raccolto l'esito di, eh, di questo lavoro di ricerca che ha trovato spazio nell'edizione di Mantova Architettura 2019. Buonasera a tutti, grazie per essere intervenuti. Cominciamo con questo pomeriggio la prima serie delle due giornate dedicate alla nuova architettura messicana che sono, occuperanno la seconda settimana di Mantova Architettura, avviata manifestazione che abbiamo avviato la settimana scorsa, giovedì e venerdì, con due mostre, una alla Biblioteca Teresiana e l'altra a Palazzo Ducale, dedicate entrambe a Giulio Romano. Ecco, da una parte Giulio Romano, da una parte le radici nella storia dell'architettura mantovana e italiana, europea, dall'altra parte questa settimana invece si inaugura una ricerca, una nuova ricerca sulla recente, più recente architettura messicana, paese appunto extraeuropeo, paese di grandi tradizioni, paese di eh, grande vicinanza, di fratellanza con l'Italia e abbiamo voluto appunto eh, avviare questo doppio registro che la Mant Mantova Architettura ha eh, nelle radici, nel, per studiare le sue radici locali e per andare a confrontarci sì, con realtà internazionali che offriamo appunto all'attenzione del nostro pubblico, fatto evidentemente degli studenti dei corsi di laurea del Politecnico di Milano, non solo di Mantova, do il benvenuto a tutti gli studenti del, della sede centrale di Milano, fatto per gli architetti, fatto per l'Ordine degli Architetti di Mantova che collabora con eh, l'attività la, del Polo Territoriale di Mantova del Politecnico per la manifestazione di Mantova Architettura e non devo dimenticarmi chiaramente di eh, ringraziare il Comune di Mantova che ci lascia questo meraviglioso spazio, il tempo di San Sebastiano per poter eh, organizzare le conferenze, l'Ordine degli Architetti perché poi dopo andremo a vedere la mostra al ex spazio di San Cristoforo che ora è l'Urban Center, la provincia di Mantova che ci mette a disposizione la Casa del Mantegna e poi tutta quell'altra serie di sostegni necessari che voi vedrete nel programma di Mantova Architettura che quest'anno ha scelto questo acceso cromatismo viola. Due parole sulle due giornate, cominciamo oggi appunto con eh, le, gli studi messicani, la nuova generazione di architetti messicani eh, scelti per questa prima serie di conferenze. Oggi questa sera ci saranno con noi lo studio Rocha Carriglio e lo studio Massias Peredo. Io ringrazio i nostri ospiti me messicani che sono venuti qui per eh, offrirci appunto le nuove tendenze della la loro architettura. Ringrazio eh, la rivista Casabella che è il nostro partner scientifico che ha un numero dedicato, questo numero di maggio, eh, dedicato alla, eh, alla, interamente monografico, dedicato a questi studi, dedicato all'architettura messicana e eh, vorrei eh, tutti insieme fare un, un applauso alla curatrice di tutto questo, che questa sera non è potuta essere con noi, le auguriamo un'immediata eh, guarigione, Francesca Serazanetti. Allora, chiamo, grazie, e chiamo i, i nostri primi due amici che ci presenteranno le loro opere, 
per il taller di Maurizio Roccia e Gabriella Carriglio è con noi Maurizio Roccia prego facciamo un applauso anche a lui grazie e poi avremo di seguito per lo studio Massias e Peredo di Salvatore Massias e Maghi Peredo ha con noi Maghi Peredo grazie Eh, gli lascio subito la parola perché poi magari dovremo fare eh, un po' di discussione e dibattito quando andremo a vedere la mostra. Eh, voglio dirvi due cose. Che cosa ha fatto Francesca? Cosa ha fatto la professoressa Serrazanetti, la nostra collega, collega sia di scuola, collega sia di insegnamento, ma collega, se mi permettete, anche del, dell'impegno della rivista, dell'impegno della rivista Casabella. Beh, eh, ha fatto un lavoro di ricerca che è quello che appunto noi vogliamo oggi mettere in evidenza. È partita, è andata in Messico, ha scoperto una nuova architettura, è entrata in un'amicizia evidentemente con degli architetti di una, di una generazione particolare, la nuova generazione degli architetti nati negli anni 70, quelli che hanno poi studiato, perché li, li vedrete tutti, nelle biografie che sono indicate, hanno studiato sia in Messico ma anche in altri paesi, negli Stati Uniti, in, in Europa, hanno esperienze di insegnamento perché mettono insieme teoria e pratica, hanno esperienze che riguardano appunto le loro committenze, che sono come vedremo committenze eh, o molto ricche oppure che riguardano i problemi sociali più urgenti del Paese, hanno esperienze che come tutti forse una una, una generazione, una certa parte di architettura combinano la tradizione con la modernità, ha una grande storia che appunto a volte, forse molto spesso, diciamo, pesa sulle loro spalle, ma non si sentono nani sulle spalle dei giganti, ma vogliono interpretare appunto questa lezione, vogliono fare in modo di interpretare i grandi maestri che l'architettura messicana ha avuto, e evidentemente lo sappiamo tutti, i Barragani, gli Ogorma, così come scherzavamo prima per noi, Carlo Scarpa, Giuseppe Terragni e eh, il Nesso Nata Rogers per Milano sono maestri che in questa generazione sta interpretando e si sta lanciando in nuove prospettive che riguardano appunto eh, le necessità che ha quel paese che ha a che fare con un paesaggio straordinario come qui vedremo ha a che fare con la pratica dell'architettura, i suoi materiali le forme, la combinazione appunto tra forme e eh, necessità che arrivano dalla società. Infatti abbiamo chiamato, non a caso, Francesca ha voluto intitolare la mostra Disegnando Messico, architettura, necessità e libertà. Ha voluto fortemente questo titolo perché è la combinazione che questa sua ricerca, che è data da un anno, da quando è andato in Messico, da quando poi ha preparato tutto il numero eh, di Casabella, questo numero di maggio, eh, si tira fuori. Un'architettura che ha forte sente forte il problema della responsabilità sociale e li vedremo in tutte le loro opere nella mostra poi quando diremo due parole sull'introduzione della mostra lei ha scelto un'opera singola per ogni studio ma soprattutto sente forte questo problema della responsabilità sociale e la mette a confronto necessariamente con le pratiche dell'architettura con questo rapporto con la tradizione con il rapporto con la costruzione i materiali, i dettagli un'altra cosa interessante che posso dire e' questo, è un altro punto che lei aveva messo in evidenza, il fatto che questa sia una comunità di architetti, sono eh, architetti, studi di architettura giovani che vengono da città diverse, una realtà metropolitana come quella di Sia del Messico, c'è la realtà di Guadalajara, la realtà di Monterrey, ma si conoscono tutti, hanno un forte senso di comunità architettonica, quindi questo è un altro, mi sembra un altro elemento molto bello. Beh, non voglio rubare altro tempo perché poi avremo appunto due giorni anche per affrontare questi argomenti, do eh, subito la parola appunto al nostro, al nostro ospite che comincia con la prima conferenza, darà la parola in seguito alla eh, collega e eh, ci auguriamo, di, anzi vedremo della bella architettura e poi risponderemo anche a qualche domanda del nostro pubblico. Okay. Molte grazie. Grazie tante. <laughs> I don't speak Italian, but I, I will do it in English. Uh, for us, it's very 
important to be in Italy when we are students, all the theory about it, uh, contemporary and modern architecture comes from here, from Italy, many, many things. Uh, and uh, in my case, the, the work of uh, Scarpa was very important in my, my career. And well, and, and I am maybe the, the oldest of this generation, uh, my partner uh, as an architect, Gabriela, is more that age, but well, I have the responsibility to be maybe uh, this uh, beginning of this generation and I, I begin to talk in this occasion. Okay, uh, I will talk about our work and about uh, what, what we really think in our work. For us, it's very important the process. Uh, and the work is not only a house or a building, it's, it's about thinking and it's about what we can do about uh, the space, the atmosphere, uh, the experience. In this case, this, this, this house, uh, that, that my mother is a photographer, she make, she make this, this photo, it's about a house, a traditional house, but it's about how the nature how the vegetation is coming by accident, and the accident is important in architecture. So uh, how can we make architecture with the life, and that means get better uh, experience in the place? So that's the question we have all the time. I begin in the 90s uh, working at the same time as an architect, but at the same time I was very close to the contemporary artists in Mexico. And uh, they invite me to do something. In this case, I make um, this, uh, in this old house, I make intervention. So I make the empty space. Uh, how you make that hole that show you that, that the arc never works uh, and how the, ha how the house want to be even if the structure is different. But uh, more that, that ex intervention that uh, for me was important in the 90s uh, and maybe uh, later makes this very ephemeral architectural work is in this work, uh, I remember the day of the uh, exhibition, the inauguration, was a London curator, very important, uh, coming to Mexico and say, in, in, the, in, the, in the world, she says, uh, how, where is your work? Because I see in the invitation is your name. And I say, you are, you are behind the, the work and it's the empty space. Ah, okay. So we go to many exhibitions. What this says that you go to many exhibitions and in the finish of the exhibitions, this was the emerg emergence uh, exhibition, and then finally in the Museum of Modern Art, she came to me and said, okay, I see all the work, and finally I decide, uh, for me it's important that your work is the best, the best one. Well, was ha for me was happy, but what I remember after many years is how come you make some work that maybe somebody don't see it, but with the time and with the thinking, uh, in the, the process of thinking, the work can get better and strong. And I think architecture is that. It's not the, f the first view, it's more about experience, about process of thinking, and for me, that's why this is a very important piece. In, in that days that I was making a lot of ephemeral interventions, I make this whole uh, in, the, in a gallery that was a house in, in Mexico City. So I make this little hole you see uh, here, 45 centimeters diameter, that really was a line that crossed between uh, these two, two threes. And I, maybe, I, hello, hello, I think it's better if I, hello, 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 no. Okay. Yes? Okay. Here? Okay. <laughs> it's very like this. So I, I make this. Is here okay? <laughs> ah, 
thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, so the, the, this line between these trees uh, really is the, the idea how the house is different because we make these holes. Uh, the holes are in, in, the, um, in, in the walls, it's like a drawing, but at the same time it's going different spaces between. And then how, with a little hole, you can make something that doesn't change the idea that you can go to the bathroom or you can go to some rooms or to the closet. You can use everything, but you have a little thing that change everything. So with this empty intervention, about empty space intervention, you can really change the idea of a house, a space, just uh, working with uh, some worker doing this hall for a week, and then the people see this gallery that see before, but in different situation. Well, uh, in, the, in the beginning of the, the 21th century, uh, I make this uh, school of blind people, the political buildings. I really like and love this idea of political buildings. And this is important because uh, uh, social building, uh, social uh, buildings, because this was for blind people, or maybe uh, people that almost don't see, but they need to go to this school to understand how work in, in, in the world, in the city. So we make uh, with local materials like tepetate, that means the tufo here in, uh, in Italy, and concrete. Uh, local materials that the people don't use anymore, but they are very good, this is land, land uh, brick and and how they, they work so um, that was the place we have a problem because we have two meters high of all this uh, construction uh, garbage and so only if we have to leave this uh, change this for the place will cost a lot so we only move move with with 70 percent the land and then put the, good la uh, earth inside to make a garden. And then we make a, a place that is close to the city, to the, to the streets, to the noise. But here inside, you have a plaza, a patios, between a relation. Uh, when, when we make the model, we think maybe we'd make a silly building because it's very rationalist, no? But uh, when, when a, Sp a Spanish man come to from ONCE, that is the Organization of Blind People in Spain, to have one million of dollars of in, in equipment. Uh, he came to here, and we make this, this uh, model because it was 100 scale, uh, uh, uno a cien, uh, and then you can put out the roof. So he begins to, to with the finger, begins to see and, and walk inside the building. And he said, ah, okay, here is a big spy, a, a nice space because it's 4.5 4 centimeters, then it's 4.5 meters. And then here is the place for the, for the light and you walk here and you have a plaza. And then I understand that I was not that wrong because the model was not uh, fancy, but the, 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 the things we were thinking for the School of Blind was good. So that's why uh, now I will show you how is the experience of the place. We use, uh, as I tell you, local materials like volcanic stone or tepetate. This tepetate, uh, you can never use it in, in, in four or five floors, but with the old new technology, we have concrete columns inside and we can use that traditional materials in other high. Uh, well, the, the inside is about how you can have these patios where is the the, the flowers, the garden of all uh, smell uh, gardens, and then you have this patio with water, with the sound of the water, and then uh, places to, to teach. You know? And then how can you have experience with, with, the sh with, the, with the light, with the shadow, with the contrast between, and the texture of the materials? And then how you can use different heights to have a special, uh, for, for a space experience and go 
to the garden of flowers smell that you can smell and this is very open because it's a mix between the teachers the 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 people is blind but even the families that came but here is more for the blind people and then you begin to have more radical relation with shadow light shadow light and to make a, a plaza they never ask for a plaza but we make this plaza that you can have the sound of the water and then uh, the, uh, a shadow with these magnolias these trees so how can you make a space for that people? Uh, we we used the same structural position like nine columns a roof but here is very open because the program tells you here is a gallery and here is more close because the program tells you this is a workshop and then we make a strategic that makes some skeleton in concrete but all the skin you have here is this very not expensive materials to change you the program between places that, that you can open or that are open all the time and they can change it depends the, the moment and how they want to use it and as I told you before we use 14 meters with this material and how this works like a, a really 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 uh, big skin of, of of uh, earth that gives you other experience with the place and maybe sometimes we use these uh, elements to not use a column and to make places here for, for a library uh, places that you can have sound books and one more time the, the, the patio we have uh, in the high of the hand a lines that gave you some surprise about vertical horizontal uh, you can know w what is the building you are touching and then understand where where you are and place that you can only walk and have six different uh, uh, olors plants that can give you different compositions and experience and i have to say that the first moment I, we, we came with that, we didn't, I didn't uh, smell nothing. I was very sad because I think it's very intellectual, my idea. But two, day, two, two weeks af uh, after, it's raining. I go there and I begin to smell and to understand the density of the smell and how the space can change depends on these kind of elements. And I, I was thinking by myself, how come we do this for blind people only? We have to do for all the people. I mean, why we forget the, the other sense uh, in our building? So it's important to understand what is very important to do the, this in our buildings. We make, 10 years later, uh, in, a, in a historical place, a library. They, they decide to make a lot of libraries for different architects. And they say, you, can, you, you will make the, the blind library because you did before the school so we have this place to make the library there is other libraries here in this whole building we only ask to use the patio for a, for one more time for a garden with, with the smell um, this was the place before how they use it it's, it's not good conditions and then we decide to put one more time the place of some books here with a steel without columns and then a place to live and be all the day here and use the garden we make this garden in this old uh, patio and people can have this experience again and in the place we make between the historical uh, building with, with, uh, with wood how we can make a new elements to make the new infrastructure how can we make again with different colors the, the wood to understand places to be we use the yellow because the, the people that is uh, almost blind the yellow is a good color so it's new aesthetics even we make some literature 
for people like Borges or others that talks about blind situation. And then how the blind, the blind children or the son, the, the son, son uh, daughter of a, a blind people can be here at the same time. How we uh, make some furniture for these people, for acoustics. And then we decide uh, to put some, um, uh, you know, for, they ask for art pieces, so we decide to make uh, this sound work for some artists that the people can hear, and acoustic walls, and there is the inside of this uh, sound, inside sound pavilions to, to hear sound books. Here is how you, uh, make the sound pieces in our place. This is what the curator of uh, artist curator make for us. So what? Well, this is this, that's how we work in a historical place. Uh, at the same time, we make um, uh, this this place that is very uh, inter interventions we make in a uh, in a church. This was at some floor we have, a, they want to put, put again, put, uh, they don't want any more this floor because you have the church like this because in Mexico is a, a place of water because it was a lake. So all the uh, buildings are going like this. So they want to put out this one and they say, why don't you use the same material? We use the material and then uh, we, make a new place, a new space in the place. You, we, work, we work with the workers of the place, and then with almost nothing, make in, in one week a place that they can use. With that, we understand that with almost nothing, almost trash, we can do some space. Um, in the public space, uh, in public buildings, we need to, to understand that we can use no, it's not like in Europe or in states that you, uh, it's very expensive to use now these local materials. And here we, we use this volcanic stone. Maybe the cement is more, but it's skin. So we have to understand how to use the pens of the price, uh, the building. And then if we understand the place, the local situation, and then we make a place for, it's a workshop for people that works carpenters, painters, etc. And we make for 13 meters to four meters, this place that you have the north in direct light. At, at the same time, you have uh, a place that works inside with some steel construction, one more time the skeleton. And then you have this vertical heavy volcanic uh, walls. And then you have this very light horizontal uh, elements that makes the space and makes the, the relation with the light. Uh, in, the, in, that, in the same uh, places I make uh, in, in Mexico City, one more time uh, intervention. This is a, a sculpture they make for the 60, the Olympics games. This is a pro Uruguayan man, Fonseca. And the, he, it's how he made this sculpture. So they ask people to, artists to make some, something inside because it's empty. And I decide to use the same material, well, the same kind of material, and then inside to make stairs just to walk inside and to have experience in the place. One more time, we ask people to, to make this uh, in two weeks, and the workers make the last decisions. The only thing is not cut the material because they will use it again. They, uh, and then we have a nice experience about a strate a strategic how to make it. Uh, one more time, public space, we make a, a market, and we understand that if we, have, we want to make a popular market, we have to think in the tianguis, how, how works these uh, elements that everybody makes in the streets uh, with colors uh, like, like uh, these ones, no? Uh, and then we say, okay, how can we make a new idea of market with these elements. So that's why we decide to use different hives, three different hives, uh, and how the light can come inside and have a new market, but 
with the, the lecture of the popular mind. Uh, so that's why we make this. And then we have louvers only in the south and in the west, and the, the, and the sun cannot be bad because you have indirect light. And the, the, and the wind is coming from the, the northwest and it's coming for the louver, so clean you the smell of the place. So the idea is how can you, how can you make, how can you make, I'm sorry, how can you make a, a market with not too much money because it's a very popular, but understand the light is important and how the people can live inside the place and how all these uh, elements, the vibration of all the products can go inside. And then the vibration of the, the roof is the same like the vibration of the auto construction buildings that comes in the place. So just understand how are our cities, how we work our cities, and you cannot make a contemporary building that imposed a situation. You need to have a lecture of the place. And then you can have a very abstract idea, but this idea came for a popular market in a, a, a popular place. The same idea we have uh, with a house. Yes, I mean, in this case is how you can play with the topography to make a little house of concrete. But the idea we have all the moment is how with two materials, concrete and steel, the windows is working structural, and then how you open to the, to the space. And how, work one more time, the skeleton, the skin, we love the idea that the building can show you how it works in construction. And how, if we have a lot of trees, we can open the space because we, with the, our curtains are the, the trees. I make, we, we make a, a school of art in Oaxaca with Ram Earth. And the idea is how can we make a place one more time, we don't have a lot of money, so we only can make eight, ten studios. Uh, so we need to have add space. That's why we make something that make uh, whole, uh, space and, and patios between. Uh, we use some land that they have to use, make this uh, water deposit, and then we put it here to change the topography, this is the place, and this is how we, we make it. And then we make all these uh, studios uh, for artists. Uh, and then you have like a chest, the white and the black. This is the patios, this is the, the studios. It's open to the north, and everything is double space, and nobody can see the other ones. It's a crosswind uh, place. This is how it works, and this is how it was going inside. We make the stone of the place in the where is the talud, the, the earth, and then we begin to use it to make uh, the place. As I tell you, we all, all the times we, we work, we use the stone of the place. We don't want to use other stone that is not what is there. And then the ram earth is what our, our first experience with uh, ram earth, and the in the middle, we make here places that you make a hall that remembers Monte Alban, that is a Hispanic zone, that you made, make a patio inside. And then, how can you make these concrete elements? You, do you know in Mexico, there's a lot of earthquakes. So if we make these elements in these two, two directions, you can make a, a roof, and then you can begin to put the ram earth in the top. That gave you the opportunity to use these materials with new technologies. So the idea is we can make traditional uh, materials, but we need to put it in other situation. But the more important thing is the experience, how we make the, the experience of the place. So then you walk and inside, or in the, in, in the, when you go up of the garden, or if you begin to be in 
patio by patio, and how the shadow, the blue of the sky, and the run bird begins to make experience. And the experience is every, every patio, every place have different situation. Maybe we have a very Cartesian plan, architectonic plan, but in the finish, we have every place a different experience. Um, and what is nice about using these uh, organic materials is the sound, the sun is coming, and, and, and you can see how go inside of the wall, the shadow, etc. Like the, like, the, like the house of concrete, we use these elements, the windows, uh, uh, like, like uh, to, I mean, part of the construction. So you don't have wall, then you have these uh, windows as construction, no? as a... And, and the idea is maybe you can see a boxes, but there are not boxes. There are vertical and horizontal uh, volumes that made the composition of the place. Well, uh, we, uh, talking about Scarpa, uh, for me, was in this it was very important because we, they asked us to make uh, here was a convent, but the convent, you cannot see the convent because they make a hotel and they begin to put construction, construction inside the building. So for five years, four years, we change the place to understand what happened here, but very close to the center of, of Oaxaca, but here was a very 16th and 17th century built uh, convent, but because they cross a street here, they broke the, the convent and then the, it's anymore a convent. So they begin to forget the place, but what's inside other construction. Here is the hotel, inside of this was the convent, and we know it was a street inside, and inside was the facade of the place. So this is the ruin, how it was the place before. We begin to, to make these holes, like, like the intervention I make with the holes in the gallery, uh, and then understand that this was a, a play for cars. I mean, the people make a, uh, where, where they put the cars inside. And then after that, we begin to understand if there was the convent, and we find, in, in the finish, we make the convent again, no? And we make this plaza, this, this, this uh, street inside. It's a private place, but everybody can walk inside. We decide to use with steel and wood the new intervention, like this one, because this, this was part of the convent, but then, we decide to use a new part to make a library here. And then here we have a restaurant and then we put a new part here. Or we have we, we gallery and we put a new part here. This is 20th century, uh, 18th, 19th century, and this is 17th century. And how we, with the 21th century, begins to change the place with the new program. So, it's not more important the 17th century. Every century is important. So that's why we begin to make these interventions in the place. Uh, and then here is how was the hotel. We begin to change it, change it, and then we make the new structure. So how can we make a new part of the building? That was very polemic in Mexico, but we have a good, uh, fine, we, we have with authorities, we can have good dialogue to make a new part because they, you can change it later, that's the idea. The, you make a new structure, but after, after time you can change it. That was how we make the, ne the negotiation. That was the hotel, and that's how we change it. Uh, and then how we, we, you begin to work with the, the contemporary part and the old part. This is the middle, the, the, the first floor. And then the, the last floor, we make a new, po a new contemporary portico. That ha this is how the technology can help us to not have columns and, and to have this space and to read the old space. And how works this library between the new and the old part together to make a new space. And this is the last part that, as I tell you, that this is the new contemporary portico in the, in the last part. Uh, we move and we can move this uh, roof 
to change the, depends you, the, wet, the weather. If it's not raining or the sun, you can move this. And that, and that is the big uh, wall. They, they, they broke it. So when they broke it and we make this facade inside, uh, and we understand that, uh, that we have this facade of hotel, we say, no, we have to put the memory of, of what is happened there. So we convince our client that the convent is broken, broken, broken. So we have to leave the, the distance between the inside of the portico and outside of the rooms of the convent. So that's why we make this new fashade that makes these, two, these lines, because this is a new part, but this is the part that remembers the cut of the, of the, of the place. And this is, for example, other building of the 20th century, but we decide, yes, to make something more simple here, because before you have, because it's south, these stupid things. So we only make with wood the opportunity to, to, to not have the sun inside. And inside you have a beautiful uh, contemporary place with these columns. So we only clean and clean and clean and to put a, a gallery and inside, because now we have a place here inside, uh, we have uh, this new element, like, like we say the 21 architecture that as a, 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 a acupuncture to begin to make the program, like this is the gallery and the office, and how the, they can live in that space. And in the other side, we have this uh, house, and we cannot make other, build, other, other sides, so we make uh, this roof that is inside to make a shadow, uh, but we can open everything to leave the place in the, na in the, in the nights or in the day. Uh, and even in the, in the sites, we begin to change some houses of the 19th century. And then one more time, use contemporary, the 21th century, to make the, 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 the union of the different ages. So that's how we work here. I like this photo because it's about the make a good restoration, but make a, 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 a intervention to make because the program you can really uh, do something, you know. And then they live at very good the places, so now it's a very life life place. Uh, we make a sound pavilion. Um, we, we make a sound pavilion. Uh, in, in, in San Luis Potosí, they ask us, my brother is a musician, and myself, they say, you, you, we want you to make a sound pavilion in a museum, but in the garden, because, uh, so please uh, go to see the place. Uh, they say, here you can make the, the sound pavilion, we don't have not too much money. But when I see the, the other place, that is this tree and this wall, the historic, uh, memory of this place was the militars come here to practice the, the, to shoot the wall. So I see this this wall, this tree, and these two stones, and I say, "Wow, this is a place." So in one moment, when they say make a pavilion, I begin to say, "Well, maybe I will make something very more more spectacular." <laughs> but I remember, like the, in the beginning, I tell you the risk. To, to disappear. So we decide to make this wall only a roof and a, and, a, and, a, and a floor to be between the tree, two stones, and the wall. And then make a little holes that a children or a big man can see outside. Uh, remember the, the shoots of the militars, but for other reasons, to make a shadow. And then we make, this is a new wall, this is concrete, so it's almost the same that the other one. Uh, this is the old one, this is the new one. So the people, sometimes some friends tell me, no, where's your pavilion? I didn't see it. Because then if you go to outside, you only see two or three walls of, of stone. But when the people can go and understand this a whole, they came here, look inside, and understand it's a place. It's a place with a shadow, and it's a place with a pre-existent pre pre wall 
with a tree and with the two rocks. And how can you really have a good moment here? My, my brother make in this sound uh, place, he make uh, the birds, the texture of birds. So, and he, he make the memory of the same birds of the place. So we are talk, working with the memory. And then one more time, we have these halls to have other experience with the, the outside landscape. And one more time, we have the persistence is the wall, the tree, and two, and two rocks. Uh, because it's not only important to have the persistence of 17th century building. This is important too, because everything is memory. Uh, we are doing a, a, a very important uh, uh, in, a, in 900 hectares, a winery places, but it's more important that they will make 500 houses. We invite uh, 50 architects, 25 from outside of Mexico and 25 from inside. The people is in the exhibition, everyone is in, the, in that invite in this place. And then we have this beautiful place in, in the north of Mexico, uh, close to, to California. And we begin to make a lot of buildings 10 years ago, and we are doing and doing some little acupunctures in the, in the places. Here is a winery. One more time, we say four or five materials. We don't like to use too much materials, local materials. Here you, you have concrete, stone, uh, wood. And how works the place, how we can make a hole, this, for gravity, you have a, the winery, but at the same time, you have a statement in the, in the landscape. Uh, and the, you can use it good for a, for a little winery. Uh, and how you begin to work with the light uh, is important. How can you have the, the view to the, to the landscape? And then they ask to, to do some hotel with camp elements. So, so they say, no, we already buy, buy the camps. So, we use it as a pre-existing the, 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 the tents. And then we only make these boxes of, of wood to make the bathrooms uh, and to be high 60 centimeters. So we, we have this little hotel in the place. And then we make a bathroom because they begin to make a, 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 a lot of parties. People is uh, getting... Uh, Mary there, so it's a lot of people, so they, they say we need a lot of bathrooms, so we say we, we have the opportunity to make a good bathroom, so we make a patio, the place of women, men, and then you wash your hands in the, where is the, the a water that we make here. Here now, the pre-existence was uh, some olives here, and then we make this place that uh, is experience. I mean, sometimes you have a, some building uh, bathrooms and you say, well, just make experience. It's very important how you walk. You have different uh, transit in the place. And then one more time, how we begin to work with the materials, with the light, with the gravity of the place. And then how, if you are washing your hands, you have the water, the sound. And if you begin to go, even even in the top of the place, you have uh, in, the, in the top you have a place that the people don't see a bathroom, have a garden of water and a fountain of, of water inside. So how really you can begin to work with some walls to make a space, even if only you, they ask you to make some bathrooms. Uh, we are doing this kind of work. Uh, for the, for uh, for uh, the new elements, uh, also this something that is getting bigger. Uh, and now we are doing a new hotel there with the, in concrete, uh, and and an hotel. But, but I, I will not show you now some renders. Uh, sorry, because I, this is okay. Um, one more time, talking about preexistence, we make this. This is a plastic, of, pa fabric of plastic, and they want to put it away, but I say, no, we have to use it because it's a, a place for a museum, a photo museum. And uh, we, we say we can use it even if it's not important for historical reasons. So we analyze the place and we understand 
that we can use this, all these elements to make a museum. We only make this place to, to put everything together. So how, this is the new part, and how we can one more time with contemporary architecture change the other elements to be good for the, for the, for the museum. And then we begin to understand we can make a very light construction and, and not extensive, to, but with the idea of, a, of this kind of fabric, control light, have some uh, views, but the idea is how you can make a public space a photo museum with different elements. Uh, this was our old space, but we clean everything that you can have a good place to, ha to, to, to have photos, this other space. And then this is a space I showed you at the beginning. How can we change this and manipulate with the light, etc., to make it? Uh, the idea is how every, every work we, we make, like this one, even in, we make a garden in the top of the building. How can you make new constructive systems to have uh, very light elements in the place? But with the money we have, we can remove and use some buildings for, a new, for new reasons, for new programs. Uh, the same idea we make with our university. They ask to, to, to this old house, and then we make the restoration of the house, but we need we new, new, have a new program. So we have a restoration of the house, but there and there we make this new building and other building here that gave you the opportunity to have all the square meters they want to. This element is simple, simple, heavy in the place. I mean, there is not a foundation for this building. So we need to make how the way, remember that in Mexico is an earthquake, but how we can make some building that can be in the top of other building. And then the last, the, the old patio, we make a new experience there. So we have the old part, the new part, uh, the circulation. So one more thing, how, how we can play together the new and the old, and never forget what the, 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 the contrast and the tension between. This is the tab where is the director, I have a new view. This is our relation with the inside of the historical place. And how, this is how it works. We make, in Mexico, you know, there is a, there is a, a a, very, a lot of problems with, with the narco traffic, etc. So now they ask us to make a, a place uh, of justice where, where are going the guilty people, etc. But they are very bad. Everything is there is not good. The people is guilty and they go to the jail, but everything is not good. So they ask, say, we, 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 we will come back to the oral justice and we want to make some places, and, and, and they ask us, and we say, okay, but we make it with garden, with a new space. So this is the space we use, so the people cannot go outside, uh, but we have some patios. This is in Pascuaro, so in Pascuaro is a lot of uh, uh, stone and uh, uh, barro, the same like this, no? Uh, and then we say, okay, we, we, we need to make a lecture so one more time, the people cannot go outside because you have this double wall, but the light can come inside, no? And we can, we can have some gardens. Uh, so we make this place, this is a, on the, on the construction, and then we have this place uh, that the people go, goes, the families of the guilty men, the guilty men goes the people, the justice men, etc. It's a very stressed moment. So how can we make some places that have other experience? So that's why we begin to make, play with the light, with the, 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 the materials we can have very close in the, in the little town Pascuaro. So 
the idea is how can you make contemporary architecture, ar architecture but remember the historical, the local, the materials of the place, um, and how you can make experience, that is important. If you go here, you have some atmosphere, some experience of walking and, and surprise to see a garden, surprise the different life you can have all days. And, uh, and, and how come you cannot have a garden here if you are in a very, as I say, stress moment? We use wood because in that part of Mexico, Michoacán, they have traditional wood houses. So we say we have to, re we, we, we need to come with the wood, with the el barro, with the, and then we have the concrete and the steel, the cement and the steel with the, ele the concrete elements, the contemporary elements that help you to, to, to make the, the texture of this. So, so the idea is to have in all these elements in the in the corre, corre, uh, in the porticos in, in the patios, experience light experience atmosphere place to be shadow uh, tectonics uh, we make in Milano uh, in sixteen uh, a pavilion they ask us to make a Earth Pavilion. Uh, we have a competition between Francis Quere, we, we win in this occasion, and, uh, and we, they ask us to make a Ram Earth Pavilion, but we cannot make a Ram Earth Pavilion because you know in Milan you need to make something in 10 days. Uh, so we begin to work with the steel and the tufo, that is the tepetate, uh, and then we make this experience that gave the opportunity to, we prove this, a makeup, that you can, the heavy of this can go to all the floor and then make this piece that gives you the opportunity to have the, the earth as experience, but you can put out or put on the pavilion everyone, everyone you want in 10 days. And, and here is the Hermes experience inside, but you have the experience of earth inside, uh, out and inside. The, in, we, we use this video because it's how we can make in 10 days the construction of the place. Uh, if you see, it's not cement, it's not concrete, we only use steel and the tufo. So for us, it's a laboratory. How can we make with, with earth, with traditional pieces, a new idea of construction. So we, we do it with Italian constructors. We, we have to understand the new rules, so we have to make more little the pieces because so, it's some rules about the heavy of the pieces for the workers. So we have to understand how we work in a different uh, places, uh, countries to understand and but in oral work, it's about the, the, the construction of a system uh, to understand um, the to understand the, the, the material. And, 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 and that's how we are almost finished. The chocolate center that is in the exhibition is in, te, in, in Tepetate 2, like 2 for here. And this element is one more time, we need a place that the people can play inside here or have a theater or an auditorium, but at the same time by north you can have workshops inside. So this is a community center in a very poor area in Mexico and we need to create this space uh, in a very, uh, I mean it's a lot of sun here, uh, so how we can work with a garden, with a place to be, and then the workshops in the top, and this is the, the process in construction, this is a place in a very poor area, very, very hard and a strong uh, miser the, uh, marginal area. This, you can see this is inside of this, uh, you know, poor area with a lot of uh, drugs problems. And then how we can begin to make this space that gives you the opportunity to make a lot of programs, concerts, uh, football, whatever you want to do inside is good. 
So one more time, we use a traditional material, but we use new technology to make this kind of buildings that you can have this empty spa space. Uh, and how we can work with the, with the, so, with the light, with indirect light, and the, how it works in the library, and the, how you can be even in the top, the people is there doing uh, dance classes, etc. No? Okay, and uh, to finish, I, we, we call about a little, a little piece, a little uh, studio we make in 100 square meters. It's a studio for my mother that is a photographer. She tell me I want a tower, a brick tower. I, we, I don't want to see outside. I only want to have a contemplation place. Uh, so I, I decide to make a place. To, it's an archive. She has all the photographies here and books and objects. She have for she trips a lot in, in in her life, and then a place with two patios, and we call it celosia, uh, open walls that you can have the sun and the wind inside, to have a, a nice experience in all the, the place. You have kitchen, bathroom, and bathroom, and uh, and 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 you can go to see the city in the top. There is the archive, and then we, we don't use concrete in this part. One more time, because the earthquake, like in the Hermes Pavilion, we use only steel, 60 centimeters here, 60 centimeters here, and then if the earthquake comes, this move, but never goes down, but you don't have concrete. And then here, because you have two floors, then you have concrete and no problem because it's compression and tension. So this is the, pro the, 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 the process of the construction. Uh, how works the idea of working with uh, the bricks like a camera, like diaphragma. And then how this begin to give you some surprise about light, about density, about atmosphere. So we understand in this building, in this little building, that every building is important. The big, the, 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 short, the short ones is about the, the, the lo intangible, about the, the, the space, about the experience, about the atmosphere, and about the, mater, about the materiality and how this works in the barrio, in the place, in the local place, and then how with two or three materials, every experience, every building, you can have a new condition, something that gives you some surprises. You can see here how it works, the steel is here. And then here you can see some light, uh, very light, the, the, the wall, because you don't have concrete. So how the light begins to make their own uh, game in the, in, the, in, the, in the experience, no? and how it begins to work every space, every part. Even if you have 100 square meters, uh, you, uh, as the first photo I take of my mother, of the house here one more time in her studio, how the accident needs to have more accident to the place. And then every, every part you have here, you can have a regulation of light, and then the wind is closed, you are inside, you don't see outside, and you have experience every part you go, depends uh, the moment of the day. The experience, the, fin the final experience I have in this moment of our career is that these buildings, even if we are doing now more big buildings, these buildings like the bathrooms or like the pavil sound pavilion or like this studio, maybe they, they are very small, but in every case you have the important idea of sun, light, experience, atmosphere. And I think the more important thing in, la in, in architecture is that. What is happening with the space? What is happening, with what the architect needs to make the dignity of the space, even if it's l low or, or, or not low cost, we need to make 
important space for the people. And this, the, that is not about materials, that, that is not about money. It's about a political, ethical condition. And that is the way we are still working in our work. Thank you very much. Bene, adesso chiamo Maghi Peredo. Grazie per la... per la seconda conferenza e poi andremo a inaugurare la mostra. Hi, good afternoon. It is an honor to be to be here today in this extraordinary place with this amazing group of talented Mexican colleagues. Uh, it's amazing to see so many people interested in Mexican architecture. Thank you for, for coming. Thank you to the whole Mancho of Arquitecturas team for all your help. Thank you to Casabella and special thanks to whatever you are, Federica Serrazzanetti. Thank you for considering our work to be part of this amazing curation that, that you have done. Um, I'm here of, of, of behalf of our studio, Macias Peredo, and especially also on behalf of my partner, Salvador. He's my architect partner and he's also my, my partner in life. So um, thanks from the both of us. Uh, Salvador and I lead a studio that is based in the city of Guadalajara. Guadalajara is the second largest city in Mexico. For us, something that has been very important is to be aware of who are we, why we look at things one way or another, and what is what we do. And Guadalajara has definitely influenced that. In contrast to some other Mexican cities, Guadalajara was a created city. It was a colony of the Spanish culture, so architecture there has always been an importation. The great boom and growth of the city came in the 20th century. It came along with the importation of foreign architecture models, mostly modern Corvusian models, like you see here, but also there was a group of Mediterranean influences led by architect Luis Barragan in his emerging architecture. But in any case, these architectures were made with the resources that were available and with very rudimentary and local processes. Whatever the imported language was, there was they were made the same during much of the 20th century. This type of architecture for us had been the most ordinary and familiar when we were very young. And how did we become aware of that? The professors who had an influence on us and first architects with whom we worked would take care of the construction of their projects themselves. Like these two very important teachers for us, Sergio Ortiz, Hugo Gonzalez, among, among others, whose houses were made through their direction as builders. We learned from our teachers that there was a culture in our city of being directly on site, taking care of the good execution of things. The architect is not only generating ideas, is the general contractor and responsible for the construction processes. Much of the idea of architecture in Guadalajara relies on this careful execution. Therefore, started, started an independent practice in this city inevitably forced us to build our initial projects. One of our first commission was to turn this 1950s house into offices for rent. During the renovation work, we realized that beneath the surface, handmade brick walls were perfectly well executed. But it had been completely covered because of a pretension of being global, in this case modern. The value was not behind how well it was made, it was in belonging to an aspirational language. In this accidental revelation, we felt that the only thing we needed to do was to expose this traditional system. 
we found a great value and beauty on this. But the important was to realize that we lived in a city of artisans, a place where the possibilities of handmade construction were still viable and at a reasonable cost. We became aware that we had a great opportunity behind this direct relationship with the craftsmen because they were our staff, that is, we not only had a few collaborators at the studio, we had employees on site, and we were in charge of leading them all. And many times react and let ourselves be advised by these craftsmen. From that, from that moment, locality played a key role on our practice. We began to realize that having this relationship with an extraordinary workforce could become a way of doing and understanding a personal architecture. In addition to the idea of space, we felt eager to do projects that manifest this awareness of locality and the idea of doing good, executing well. As we see in the masonry of this house, a house made of an exposed brick, a brick that was specially baked of a specific measure to contain the structure, an artisanal luxury that can still be done in Guadalajara. We even felt we should leave some witnesses of this. We asked them to leave certain isolated bricks sticked out from the facade to show that they are not a coating, but a part of an entire system. And at the same time, with all the wood structure, the carpentries, and all interior crafts. Or like the work of stone and wood behind this pavilion that is an extension of a house. So to be part of the performance of the building processes has not only made us to, to do things in a certain way, but also has made us think and relate to architecture in, in a certain way. As the office started growing, we needed to left behind the contractor role. But still, we, don't know, we do not imagine doing a project where we are not involved in the building process, because we have become ourselves in a way, or gotten used to, maybe, in which we end up defining many situations directly on site in the process as in the case of this house that is still under construction where we defined what kind of plaster we wanted directly there, experimenting with the master masons with pigments and additives to get the right stucco. Or how to make prefab concrete beams, testing concrete formworks so they could be later connected to the rest of the structure or how to make that ordinary clay brick became waterproof and fade its reddish color by preparing a liquid mixture so that masons would baptize, that's how we call them, baptize each one of, of, of them before assembling. Every time this consciousness of the context becomes stronger in direct connection to the building process of architecture. That's why the first exercises of vertical housing in the city were like this. This is an example. Made with the same rudimentary wall system than a common house, it may look like five houses were stacked up. And those who did this were the architects, the developers, and the builders at the same time. Something that seemed very ordinary and now seems extraordinary to us when we have left the city and see that in, or, in other places it, doesn't, it does not exist. These examples of the 60s and 70s attract us. So when we were commissioned our first vertical housing building, we thought if it was possible to make a building with all the contemporary conditions but made with a wall system, so this building is not made out of columns or concrete frames. It's made of walls that support the whole building. With concrete walls, we achieve the free spaces at the inside and create controlled openings to reduce impact of noise from the big avenues. Apparent walls that use a very ordinary form of the locality made of metal trays. The wall dominates and manifests how things have been done in Guadalajara. 
And now I would like to move to another level of interpretation of our context. It has not only been about understanding and interpreting what surround us, but it has also interested us very much how the Mexican context had an influence on others who saw our territory from the outside. This photograph, these first photographs were taken by the Bauhaus professor and artist Joseph Albers during his many trips to Mexico in the 40s. He took hundreds of them, especially about primitive structures as he was doing abstract studio of form and geometry. Between Salvador and I, there's always been a common interest about primitive and the vernacular that keeps captivating us until now. And that we shared with, our, with these two German artists who became research topics of our master degrees. On the left side, Joseph Albers, and on the right, Matthias Geritz, who came to Mexico to introduce some of the principles of the Bauhaus into the schools of architecture in Mexico. From them, we learned an extraordinary capacity of analysis and synthesis of distilling and abstracting what they saw. For example, this is the floor plan of Ciudadela Square, a very important sunken plaza at the pre-Hispanic urban site of Teotihuacan that Albert studied. And after we did this analysis of proportions, we could see that he was painting, painting abstractions of concave or convex spaces, squares or courtyards like the pre-Hispanic ones. An exercise that he repeated for more than 30 years in his celebrated painting, Homage to the Square. Here you can see how that homage to the square was in fact a tribute to the diagonal, the, di the diagonal of pyramids. And on the other hand, the sculpture of Geritz, always influenced by this primitive and so rooted Mexican monumentality and landscape. Actually, Geritz used to say that Mexico is a country where everything is possible. Something that has interested us about him is to understand how a foreigner becomes local by understanding the environment where he works. This is the only piece of architecture that Gerritz ever made, the Experimental Museum of El Eco in Mexico City. It was an architectural manifesto against the Mexican rationalist imported architecture of the 50s that he named emotional architecture. That's why the walls of the museum are diagonals that never reach 90 degrees. An annual contest of young architects is made to develop a temporary intervention to the patio that enables other ways to use the space. So we thought that we could establish a relationship with the building by lifting the whole floor of the patio, building a new diagonal, but covering it with exactly the same clay floor of the courtyard. And by that, we were able to do a new piece with the memory of its original condition. With this, we could erase the short wall that divides the museum and the street, building a bridge, a viewpoint towards the park that is in front of it. This was the question, was it possible to read differently the same space, the same floor of the same material just by giving it another quality? This is the floor made by vol black volcanic stone of a tiny architecture gallery in Mexico City called Liga Space for Architecture, where we were invited to do an installation. And again, we wanted to take a deeper look to what was already there. We discovered that in order to obtain this commercial laminated floor, irregular stone from the mountain had to be manipulated. The pieces you see at the picture over that truck are the leftovers of that process. They are stone waste. We brought to the gallery 30, 33 tons of the leftovers from the same volcanic stone. And with that, we rebuilt the gallery, filling the entire space with volcanic material, seeking for that rooted abstraction capacity of our foreign artists from who we keep learning about filtering the world. 
We believe in history as a mechanism that makes possible to create buildings loaded with knowledge. History is not something rigid. You have to have creativity to take advantage of it. If you want to make conscious, sustainable, and logical architecture, we need to learn learn from the understanding of the place through history. There we can find the keys to make an architecture that really belongs to a place and to read our present at the same time and make history useful. That's why we have an affinity with the idea of collage, bringing things to the table and make them meet together as they are appropriate for each specific case. And the collage we show here was a commission where we needed to communicate the studio's philosophy through an image. We put on the same level and same imaginary site the traditional Mayat hut that after 2,000 years remains being used on the Mayan region of Mexico and the paradigmatic Farnsworth house. We like to think that these two architectures are not so distant both establish a base that regulates the land, both set vertical elements that support a cover, and both use an open floor plan at the inside. For us, beyond technique, there are no significant differences between them. We want to, re to be able to refer to both simple approaches as we work without preconceptions. We like to believe that through history and tradition is how our, our work establishes a continuity which means it doesn't begin from scratch, not interrupts, but conciliates the site's history with its present. And now that we have mentioned the Mayan hut, it can be a good example of this, especially when we were invited to make a small hotel in the Yucatan Peninsula at the Mayan zone of the country in the island called Holbox. We thought of the Mayan hut where the structure of the roof is made of wood and the closure is an independent wall out of the structure. They work separately. The wood cedar structure reinterprets the original roofs of the Mayan huts that allow flexibility in the resistance of hurricanes. So the walls mark the limit of the horizontal space and the organic structure of the roof delimitates the vertical space. So what we have here is a collage of two architectures in tension a light woven traditional handmade one at the interior and a solid white and abstract one at the outside where you are surrounded by this massy landscape. We like to think that now the Mayan huts are fluted and their communication is through the water. We even proposed a viewpoint tower to overlook the island and, one, and on one hand it reminds us to this uh, Palenque Palace, one of the structures that most interested us in the Mayan area. And on the other hand, a reminiscence to a contemporary small skycrapper placed at the edge of this triangular plot. We find this kind of contradictions and duality very attracting and, contra and confronting. In the same track, we had to solve a house where we had a context we didn't want to relate to. And we re remember these old haciendas that used to define the limit of their plot with a long wall. And different pavilions with different uses were placed inside this wall, where they used to relate only to the outer spaces between them. So we proposed this, a pavilion for the day and one for the night, connected by a circulation and wrapped wrapped in a white ribbon, which also reminded us of the binuclear houses of Marcel Breuer. This is why the tension between these two elements, the rational modular base that defines the entire, entire domestic area, and these massive volumes that are simply the double heights that define the interior space. Actually, Von Eix, a talented friend architect from the studio of Productora, defined our practice with this drawing that entitled A Stick on a Beam, something taken, 
taken right directly from nature, barely transformed against a concrete beam that requires certain technique to be possible. And we enjoy it because he talks about an ability to bring things together, even though they might be totally opposite. In this house in the Pacific Ocean, we did with Francisco Gutierrez, there was a demand and a desire to use a traditional Dutch roof from the locality. But we also found that a matte building would be an extraordinary strategy to warranty a visual continuity of the landscape and, to, and the sea horizon without interruptions. We wonder if we could make both system, systems work together in a contemporary way. And so we did. A concrete structure would rise from the ground all the way up to meet the organic structure. We were amazed on how much a fixed concrete structure, when in contact with an organic one, can, can cause such a different reading of both. Especially when there is such a clear structural correlation between one and another, as you can see in here, our collage architecture. For a house confined among many other houses, we thought about a cloister. And because it is located in a context where many houses use traditional systems and because we, we were looking to have closed long facades to have the largest patio possible, seemed a good idea, like the prairie houses of right, very ho horizontal houses, to go for something like this. Unlike the conventional cloisters where the patio is bordered by a semi-open corridor, here that space becomes the interior of the house. The central void is a kind of huge distributor without a roof, without use, where the only purpose is to live the experience of it. And at the, at the inside and around it. Sometimes it would hold interior corridors that serve as viewpoints to enjoy the landscape and sometimes would hold a kitchen or a living room or a terrace. So we build ideas with pieces from the past and things that we see that we apply and adapt. Sometimes it has to do with the constructive system, with the space, with the site, with certain language. In contrast to the rigor demanded by construction and good execution in architecture, we believe that at the moment of imagining, you have to, have, you have to know how to get rid of that. For us, the most powerful idea do not come necessarily from reason, but from intuition, at certain point playing. Joseph Ketlas says that the game is not an unreflective or spontaneous activity. It is an operation that has to be done consciously. Games have rules, but we also believe that the good player, the one who really enjoys the game, once he knows the rules, never think about them again. This is a significant handmade clay plane we acquired in a craft market in Peru. We like it because it has the shape of an airplane. However, it doesn't fly. It only represents the idea of flying. We see the transnational sign of Air France, but also Peruvian flags and native Peruvians aboard. It's a toy, but it's fragile and heavy. Among all these contradictions, the serious idea of an airplane becomes an object of playing. Actually, we like to think that whoever made, whoever made it was also playing and using certain amount of spontaneity and freedom. We like to think that we can make clay airplanes. And like this playing, we undertook the adventure of a Montessori school in Mazatlan, invited by our partner friend, Eric Perez, where there was only six months only six months to do the project and to, to be built and furnished uh, the first stage of the master plan of the project before the coming school year began. It was crazy. About a hundred years ago, Maria Montessori proposed that a teacher 
shouldn't be a front-facing authority. It should be a guide who stays behind and moves around assisting children. The center is the scenario for everything to happen. We thought the philosophy behind it, behind the building, was the most relevant aspect. The project was just the stage for this to happen. So we started with the most basic concentric room, but it didn't have the attribute to naturally join face-to-face -to, -face to other rooms. We transform it into a hexagon based on Montessori's six learning areas. We played with as many as we could fit into the plot, understanding that, understanding that they could be built independently for any function or any future growth. We established a grid to play with and started to experiment many possible arrangements for the hexagonal buildings, testing the relationship they could have and what kind of voids were resulting from that, gaining ventilation and light between modules and creating patios of outdoor activities. We established an internal body as the interior space and an external one which would create an in-between space and a covered circulation. Until we got our final template and the final master plan. The second layer of the building was key to the project. First, because it allowed us to relate to children in a different way. We wanted to challenge the idea of crossing from one space to another through a special opening for them and for teachers. One that gives scale, but also that questions the conventions that children have about a door or a window. Why would they should be squares or rectangles? To give answer to those kind of questions is what we like about educational buildings. Secondly, secondly because through controlled openings, we could pressurize wind to achieve an important cooling effect and deal with the high temperatures of the coast city of Mazatlan. The school is full of corners, passages, spaces of all kinds for children to decide what to do with them, to play all over them. We hope that by playing, they would find it playful too. Uh, teachers weren't went crazy with these, of course, you know, children hiding everywhere. Or in this existing house, where we had to preserve the first part intact, because it belongs to a group of houses of a historical moment of Guadalajara. The area of free intervention that was left behind was a deep void trapped by the walls of the neighboring houses. And it seemed logic to set the rule of not having walls. The game was not about suffocating the space anymore. How to gain as much oxygen and light as possible, that was the question. So we thought, let's not have any vertical structure, let's play with suspended beams. Beams that would run all the way to the sides and that the entire new program was suspended from these slabs or shelves. Here you can see the connection between the existing spaces and the clear span new spaces. The stair on the right starts right in the transition. We would play with slabs that seen in floor plan never have the same dimension and in section always alternate. Despite having so few square meters, light and ventilation would freely flow through all these elements. Or this very similar case were also conditioned by the perimeter of neighbors as we wanted to build four levels for three different houses. Each one of the slabs had to have different openings, a gradient of light coming through the building. We were challenged by the idea of bringing natural light and ventilation to as many spaces as possible. Maybe this is easier to see this strategy 
we played at from the vertical communication of the building. And as one walk up and down the building, can find all kinds of open spaces in all different houses and levels. We managed that almost all spaces of the project had natural ventilation and light. And lastly, we believe that architecture should celebrate life and the events that take place in it, no matter what kind of activities, for us, is it, always, it, it will always be an opportunity to build a scenario that promotes events. Of course, we are concerned about architecture in terms of structure, order, geometry, and space, but to imagine situations in and around them is a query that's always stimulating. And sometimes meaningful, meaningful experiences happen in spaces like these where the use is not that specific. They could even be spaces that, that nobody asked for, but that they make the most of the place. Just like happened in this house where the pre-existing nature was a perfect scenario to build experiences rather than building spaces. And the life happens here. The meetings go under the shade of the tree. Or here where the commission was only to design a security point just to control pedestrian and vehicular access for a small group of houses. We thought of a little iconic tower that when crossing it offered you an experience to surprise pedestrian with an overhead light and the opportunity to make a little public square towards the street that would be full of shade when these trees get bigger and pedestrian could have a moment of rest. Or how with such simple actions like in the Eco Pavilion that we talked about previously is possible to do things that someone can feel it has always been there. However, in this project from the street, the unexpected happens. Visitors of the museum overlook and an ice cream vendor is making a sale. Or again, with the children here, how they use the covered hallways as an extension of the classroom hiding from the intense sun, intense sun of the tropical coast or isolating themselves for a little while. And within the classrooms, how all kinds of happenings are taking place led by the form of the space, always promoting the idea of center. In one of our visits, when the school was already running, we noticed there was some drawings in the classrooms. The children were asked to draw their house and their school. But surprisingly for us, the, different, the difference was that when they drew their school, they, they were able to do it just like it is. This meant a lot to us because they were not trying to find an archetype to represent a school like a kid would do for a house. They were drawing their own schools. More than any other project, we realized here that architecture still has the power to mean to communicate, a very special reward that encourages us to keep doing what we do every day. Thank you very much. <laughs>